Hi, I'm Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness with Autism Fitness Concept. Today, I want to discuss three different things, uh, three different skills that we need to consider when developing or choosing the right fitness or exercise or movement activities for individuals on the autism spectrum. Now, the vast majority of athletes that I've worked with over a decade have had deficits in strength, in flexibility, and in stability. So these are the three things that we want to build movement programs around. Now, with regard to sports, and this is always a demystification process, sports may not cover those three areas of ability. And while there might, and I stress the word might, be a socialization component to team sports, they are very seldom going to cover the foundational movement patterns that we need for daily life. So sports are okay, and I mean okay, in some situations, but what I've found for my athletes is they don't really work well in these types of environments. Why is that the case? Well, number one, from the movement perspective, sports are very finite. These are activities and movement patterns that don't generalize or cross over really well into daily life skills. The second part, from a physical perspective, is those sports, because they're so specific, are not going to not going to develop the big movement patterns, the squatting, the pushing, the pulling, the crawling, the climbing. These are not generally movement patterns that are inherent to sports-based programs. From an adaptive or motivational perspective, a lot of individuals, at least with whom I've worked, are not motivated by sports activities because it's a very abstract concept. The idea of winning and losing and scoring a point and time-based are often difficult for individuals on the spectrum and they don't have a real desire to participate in something that they don't necessarily understand. And you can take time to try to explain that and to try to teach those concepts, but I find that a huge waste of time. I'm happy to debate the subject, that's just what I've found in my own programming and my own experience. So when we're developing fitness and movement programs or seeking fitness and movement programs for the autism population, we want to do look at fitness programs and, and look at programming in general that makes sense for them as opposed to saying, well, in our culture we play a lot of soccer, or soccer's really popular, or football's really popular, or baseball leagues, or basketball leagues are really popular. Uh, what's right is not over always popular, and what's popular is not always right. That was actually a poster in my middle school science class, but it fits in this particular situation. What do we want to do? We want to establish strength, stability, motor planning, the ability to move from activity A to activity B to activity C based on the individual's current ability levels. So our programming, what we design, what we do for them from a physical perspective has to reflect that. Otherwise it makes no sense. Otherwise we're breaking rule number one of autism fitness which is we're saying we're doing something but what's actually happening is something completely different. So. What do we want to implement? Fitness programs or movement programs or anything else you want to call it, I, I don't care, as long as it satisfies developing strength in a, a, in a variety of different movement planes. Again, squatting, pushing, pulling, throwing, catching, crawling, climbing. These are not just the activities that I like to do, but they're the activities that make sense in developing strength incrementally, regardless of where we are at, at, at a current point in, in our ability levels. Um, and, and then motor planning, being able to go from point A to point B to point C succinctly. Stability, being able to move the body in a way that's safe being able to stop in a movement pattern, being able to push or pull or squat with the right muscles so that we don't have problems later in life. 
I can't imagine how many kids on the autism spectrum right now are going to have low back pathology later in life because they don't have the hip flexibility or strength or stability to be able to squat down and stand back up in a, in a healthy way. And again, with regard to sports-based programs, Yes, there is sometimes the socialization component, but what we really have to do is consider our hierarchy of goals. There can be socialization in fitness and movement programs, but what is the primary function of the program? From my perspective, I'm looking at, again, strength and stability, coordination, motor planning, and we can build in socialization as well when we have other athletes in that environment, but the main goal should always be developing the physical abilities first. And look, if we have a fitness program that makes sense for that individual and we are developing those fundamental skills, they're going to be more proficient in a sports-based activity anyway. The problem is when we take sports-based sports -based activities and we make them the primary source of movement and physical activity. It's like saying, well, carrots are good for you, so we're going to design our entire diet around carrots. That doesn't make sense, nor does it make much sense to build an entire fitness program out of a sports-based activity. I hope this has cleared up some common mythologies around exercise and physical activity for the autism population. I'm happy to discuss it more. I'm Eric Chesson, founder of Autism Fitness. Hope this has been helpful. This is Autism Fitness Concepts. Subscribe on YouTube for more videos like this and more that are uh, a lot more interactive or a lot more active than me standing behind just a, a backdrop because uh, I'd rather be moving also.